Our scripture reading there in Matthew chapter 4, verse 4. If you would turn there. And as you turn there, we are familiar with the experience of Jesus in the wilderness, right? Jesus' temptation there in the wilderness. And if we remember in Revelation chapter 12, there was a war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the devil and his angels. And praise the Lord that the devil was kicked out. And he did not prevail and God prevailed. But the only bad or sad thing was that the war came, went from heaven to where? To earth. And when he brought the war down to earth, he was there, met our first parents. And did Satan prevail with our first parents? Yes, he did. He did. And because of that, Jesus came <clears throat> to earth. And Satan could not wait. Jesus now and Satan, you see, Jesus defeated Satan in heaven. Right? In Revelation, in Revelation 12, he was cast out, that serpent of old called the devil. And it says, Rejoice, O heaven, because Satan is no longer here, but woe to the inhabitants of the earth. But then now, Jesus is on earth. And Satan cannot wait to meet Jesus on a different plane, on a different ground. Here, he knows that Jesus isn't using his divinity power. He's, he's not in heaven. He's here on earth. And so he, be, he has been waiting to meet with Jesus on this different plains here in the wilderness. And so there, Matthew 4, verse 4, after Jesus is baptized, it says in verse 1, Then Jesus was led up by who? By the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, afterwards he was what? He was hungry. And when the tempter came to him and said, If you are the Son of God, command that these stones become bread. But he answered and said to them, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. <laughs> Friends, for us to survive in the wilderness, we need to learn this lesson that we do not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes out of God's mouth. Let's pray as we begin. Father in heaven, I ask for your Holy Spirit to penetrate our hearts and our minds and to remove any demonic influence here. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 So here we see that Jesus defends, that Jesus attacks with what? With the word of God. He's basically saying, the Bible says you should not live by bread alone. Friends, our trials, our temptations, our life would be so much better if we lived by this example. And everything we confronted is what well, the Bible says. You know, if you're invited somewhere and say, well, I'm sorry, but the Bible says that I should not mess with witches or sorcerers or anything in that nature. Well, the Bible says that I can be equally unyoked, and I'm sorry. Well, the Bible says, fill in the blank. Jesus here confronted his temptation with the, the Bible says. The Bible says. But he's actually quoting Deuteronomy. And so I want to take you to the context there in Deuteronomy chapter 8. Deuteronomy chapter 8 and see the quotation of where he's quoting from. There where he says, it is written, the Bible says that man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes out of the mouth of God. There in Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 2. Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 2, this is what Jesus is quoting from. And it says, <clears throat> verse 2, Then, and you shall remember that the Lord your God led you all the way these... I'm sorry, that the Lord your God led you all the way these 40 years in the wilderness to humble you and to test you, to know what was in your heart, whether you would keep his commandments or not. That's interesting, okay? Why God led them to the wilderness. Verse 3, so he humbled you, allowed you to hunger. Notice that, friends. 
So he humbled you, allowed you to hunger, and feed you with what? Manna. With manna, which you did not know, nor did your fathers know, that you might make, that he might make you know that what? Man shall not live by bread alone, but man lives by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Here he is connecting the lesson that man should not live by bread alone through the manna. Through the manna. He's using the manna as a message to teach that we don't live by bread alone, but by the word of God. By the word of God. There are two similarities that I wanted to look at this morning uh, in comparing the wilderness in Jesus in Matthew 4, 4 and Deuteronomy here 8, verse 2 and 3. In, in, the, in, in these verses where Jesus says, and he's quoting from Deuteronomy 8, that man shall not live by bread alone, friends. How do we survive the wilderness? It's exactly by this verse. By depending on God's word. Now, the first similarity is that both of these times these words are used, they are used in the wilderness. They're both Jesus was in the wilderness when he quoted that. Moses was out in the wilderness when he's reminding the people that man should not live by bread alone. So who, how did Jesus end up in the wilderness? Who led him there? The Holy Spirit. There, Matthew 4, verse 1, he was led by the Spirit of God into the wilderness. So how did Israel end up in the wilderness? The Holy Spirit? God? God took them out and freed them out of Egypt and led them to the wilderness. Friends, God will lead you and God will lead me. God will lead us to a wilderness experience. God led Jesus and Jesus is our example to the wilderness. He led Israel out into the wilderness. And they were delivered from Egypt into the wilderness. God was... <clears throat> God had finished. Jesus had been baptized and was led into the wilderness. God delivers us from bondage, just how he delivered Israel out of bondage. But he delivered them to the wilderness. He delivered them to the wilderness. The wilderness represents your growth as a believer, friends. Your growth as a believer. Our growth takes place in the wilderness and notice, not in the promised land. Our growth, our spiritual growth, our dependence and trust in God is our experience in the wilderness and pre preparing us to enter what? The promised land. The promised land. That's why in those 12 spies, if you remember, 10 who did not believe, did not enter the promised land. Did they? Did those 10 that did not believe enter the promised land? No. That's why the Bible says, and this is eternal life, that you may believe in the Son of God. John tells us. Eternal life is believing in Jesus and and Joshua and Caleb believed the promises of God and they did enter the promised land because they believe that man doesn't live, live by bread alone but lives by what God says. And if God says, I can overtake them, I can deliver you, God will deliver you, friends. God will deliver you. Last week, last week we looked at the story of Jesus and Peter on the boat. And if Jesus says, come to do the impossible, you got to believe and step out and go. It's, 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 it's really that simple. But I know it's easier said than done. But God still knows that we can do it if we put our faith in Him. And as we go, we go trusting and proclaiming the promises. I can do all things through Christ because He gives me the strength because he gives me the strength. Our growth takes place in the wilderness and not in the promised land. In the wilderness, we learn that we don't live by bread alone, but by every word of God. And if you notice, with Jesus and even with Israel, both times they were taken to trials and temptations. Jesus was taken to be tempted. 
It says that he was taken to be tempted, to be tried. Israel was taken to the wilderness, not for a vacation, but to be tried and be purged. Before God can take you and I to the promised land, he needs to allow temptations and trials to prepare us for the promised land to prepare us for the promised land. In the wilderness, Israel was constantly doubting God's word. Constantly doubting God's word in the wilderness. And God was trying to prepare them to trust him in his word. The manna came because they complained that they did not have food, that they'd rather die. Just look there in, in Exodus chapter 16. Exodus chapter 16. Here, they are complaining that why were they taken out, that they'd rather have died. Exodus 16, verse 2. Exodus chapter 16, verse 2. This is the chapter that God rains down in manna. It says, then the, word, then the whole congregation of the children of Israel murmured against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. And the children of Israel said to them, Oh, that we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt. What? What was done by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt? Specifically, the ten plagues. And they're saying here, Oh, should we have died instead by those ten plagues? Friends, what an insult to God. Oh, that we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt when we sat by the pots of meats and when we ate bread to the full for you have brought us out into the, this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with what? With hunger. With hunger. Friends, they had missed they had missed that just right before that, God had turned bitter waters into sweet water where they could drink. And just before that, they had just crossed the Red Sea. And not just crossed the Red Sea like you're crossing the little creek. They, God divided the waters. And they walked in dry ground. And then to make, to, 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 to put the cherry on top after they finished and Pharaoh was coming, God closed the water. How can you even doubt that God won't deliver you after that, friends? After you cross through the Red Sea and then, not just cross, but God says, don't worry. If they're coming behind you, I'll close the door. Friends, the devil may come behind you, but you can always count that the God can close the door on him. Amen. Amen. God can close the door and drown the devil. Manna was sent to teach them to trust the Lord. To trust the Lord. That's why if you remember there in Exodus chapter 16 when God rains on manna, he tells them, right? Every day you're going to get a fresh supply. Every day. Don't save any for next day. It's going to spoil. Except for on the preparation day, on the sixth day. On that day, save double because on the seventh day I'm not going to rain any. But of course, what do you have? People saving some, right? What are they not doing? They are not trusting that man doesn't live by bread alone, but that man lives by every word that comes out of his mouth. If God says, every day I'm going to give you a fresh batch of manna, every day I'm going to give you. On the seventh day, I'm not going to give you any, so don't be looking for any. And it upset God there when they were out looking for some. When they were out looking for some, and he tells them, How long is it going to be that you are stubborn and will not keep my commandments? In the wilderness, while you and I are in the, in the wilderness, we must learn that man doesn't live by bread, but lives by the word of God. By the word of God. And Jesus, Jesus went from baptism to the wilderness, yes? Right from baptism, he went where? To the wilderness. If you turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 10, Israel went through the exact same process. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 1. Israel went from baptism to the wilderness, friends. 
And those today who come from baptism, they go to the wilderness experience as well. The Christian life, the church life, is a wilderness experience, a preparation for the promised land. There in 1 Corinthians 10, verse 1 through 6, it says, Moreover, brethren, I do not want you to be unaware that all our fathers were passed under the cloud, all passed through the sea, all were baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea, all ate the same spiritual food and drank that same spiritual drink, for they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was who? Was Christ. But with some, I'm sorry, but with most of them, God was not well pleased, for their bodies were scattered in the wilderness. Now these things became our example, our example to the intent that we should not lust after evil things, and they also lusted. They were baptized and taken into the wilderness just like Jesus. And Jesus, you see, Jesus had to clean them up. God had to clean them up. How many years had they been in Egypt? 400 years in Egypt, friends. 400 years. Not 40, not even four, but 400 years in Egypt. You see, they had learned to eat wrong. They had learned to worship wrong, to dress wrong, to think wrong. They, had, they were thinking like Egyptians. And God had to purge them and clean them and, take and prepare them for the promised land. So we shouldn't be surprised when someone joins the church and they still have issues. No, friends. They've just stepped out of baptism, come into the church, and into the wilderness experience where God is still purging and cleansing his people. Amen? Amen? Friends, some of us have been in the wilderness experience for over 40 years, and we're still the same way when we left Egypt, friends. <laughs> and here, we should be thankful that God is the God of mercy Amen. and works with us. And Israel was delivered, and yet in that first generation, friends, the first generation did not make it to the promised land. Friends, because we can get so attached to Egypt, if we get so attached to Egypt, we will not cross over to the promised land. If we get so attached to this world, we will not cross over to the promised land. If you think back, they had everything that they needed, friends, in the wilderness. In the wilderness, they had everything. They had a rock that provided the water. They had a, fi a pillar of fire, a cloud by day, food every day. And even to, to, to make it even better, their clothes and their shoes never wore out. They never lost a button. There was never a thread sticking out. They're like, oh, I need to sew that up. No. Everything that they had that they needed, God provided for them, friends. Everything. And they still, what? Complain against God, friends. Complain against God. How dare we? God provides everything that we need. He gives us life. He forgives us of our sins. He's in heaven interceding for us. And how dare we complain that, of things that we don't have? God is wanting us to get to the point that in our wilderness experience, we trust God. We trust God and say, God is good. You may have lost your job, but God wants you to learn and to trust in Him and still say, God is still good. Or you may have lost your health or got sick, but still trusting that God is good. Or you may have lost a loved one, and not understand why. God wants us to, till, to still trust in Him and say, God is good. Because in the wilderness experience, we need to learn to live by every word that comes out of the mouth of God. Every word. Jesus was led to the wilderness to be tried and tested. 
be tried and tested. And he trusted on a what? Thus says the Lord. Thus says the Lord. Israel was led to the wilderness to be tried and tested and they failed to trust in the thus says the Lord. They failed to trust in the thus says the Lord, friends. You and I are in the wilderness experience right now. And we need to trust on a thus says the Lord. Amen. We need to come to his promises and say, Lord, you've promised here. If I honor you, you will honor me. So I hold on to your promise. Lord, you promised he, you, you promise here that you would open the windows and flood with the blessings if we are faithful to you. Lord, you... There is nothing wrong holding God accountable to his word. There is nothing wrong holding God accountable to his word. Doesn't he say, try me. See if I don't bless you. Try the Lord. Try the Lord. Friends, turn to Job chapter 23. Job chapter 23 Job, in his wilderness experience, trusted the Lord, friends. What did Job say? Though he slay me, I will trust in God. Job did not understand why he lost all of his children, why he lost his property, why he lost his health, but yet he still trusted in God. Even his friends and his wife were, again, were telling him, it was, you know, God was cursing him. But yet, Job did not understand, but Job says, God is still good. God is still good. <clears throat> and that's why Job 23, verse 12. I have not departed from the commandments of his lips. I have treasured the words of his mouth more than my necessary food. I have treasured the words of his mouth more than my necessary food, friends. Is that true about us? Is that true about you and me? Do we treasure God's word more than our necessary food? I didn't expect an amen. Friends, if we are going to make it through, if we expect to be saved, we need to be in his word. We need to be in his word. Israel was led to the wilderness to trust in God's word. I like there when, when they're at the Red Sea and Israel doesn't, does, doesn't know what to do and what does Moses say? Stand back and watch the salvation of the Lord. And even God himself God himself even says, why, do you, why are you complaining to me? Tell the children of Israel to go forward. To go forward. If God says, go forward, God says to go forward, you have to. You must. You should go forward. Just how Jesus says, come to Peter. It was too late for Peter to turn back. He could have turned back. But he went forward, keeping his eyes on Jesus. And meanwhile, you keep your eyes on Jesus, friends. You will walk on water. You will walk on dry land. So Job here, Job here says, I have not departed from your word. I have valued your, your word more than my necessary food. This is not just theory. This is how the Christian survives, friends. This is how the Christian survives, by the word of God. Everything that we do should be guided on a thus says the Lord. Amen? Amen. Amen. Why are we here today? Because thus says the Lord, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Amen. Amen. Until... We desire God's word more than our food, friends, more than our necessary food. We are not in this text. And because today is the... What was that? 
Did you hear something or was it just me? Okay. <clears throat> and because today is the Sabbath, you know, we, we may think, well, I'm going to church, we're going to review the lesson, we're going to hear a sermon, but did you feed from the Word of God today? We should feed from the Word of God every single day. Do we eat every day? How much more? What's more important? Our physical health or our spiritual health? That's right. Our spiritual health. Because our physical health, even if we eat excellent and we're in excellent shape, we can still get sick and die. But our spiritual health, friends, will determine if you are, will live eternally or not. Psalms 119. Psalms 119, David. I'm, let's turn to Psalms 119. David also reminds us, we're going to see a couple of verses of the importance of of spending time in His Word. And we know that we need to read the Bible, pray every day. But if we evaluate our lives, really, really take inventory, when was the last time I spent just 15 minutes studying the Bible? Psalm 119, verse 103. David says, How sweet are your words to my... How sweet are your words to my taste sweeter than honey to my lips sweeter than honey to my lips and David again through his wilderness experience would you know God was preparing him to be king he trusted in God everywhere he went even while he was being persecuted he trusted in God he trusted in God Jeremiah 15 Jeremiah chapter 15, verse 16. Jeremiah 15, verse 16. Here Jeremiah says, Your words were found and I ate them. And your words was to me the joy and rejoicing of my heart. For I am called by your name, O Lord God of hosts. Man, many times we open the word and it's a joy what we're reading. Other times that we open the word and it's offensive? No? Today for the garden of prayer, I read James 1.26. <laughs> and what did James 1.26 say? If you are claimed to be religious, but you can't control your tongue, your religion is worthless. That was offensive to me. That was offensive to all of us that like to talk. Amen? <laughs> Friends, God's word, God's word can sometimes cut the inner heart. And God's Holy Spirit is guiding us, is guiding us. Yes, the Bible can and the word can be a joy. And sometimes it can hurt and cut. But in the wilderness experience, God still wants us to trust in Him. Amen. And that's why He says that man should not live by bread, by, by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. 1 Peter 2, 2. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 2. 1 Friends, we shouldn't be we shouldn't be discouraged whenever the word cuts us or offends us. You know, Jesus, out of his words, told Peter, you're going to deny me. And Peter thought, no, no, I'm not going to deny me. Oh, yeah, you're going to deny me. And I'm sure that hurt Peter. I'm sure that hurt Peter, but it was the truth, and God was trying to touch Peter's heart. And Peter remembered when that was fulfilled. But it didn't turn Peter away from God. On the contrary, it led him to repentance. Amen. To repentance. 1 Peter 2, verse 2. It says, As newborn babes desire the pure milk of the word, that you may what? Grow thereby. What is the word help? How is the word of, of God helping us in doing what? In growing. In growing, as newborn babes desire the pure milk of the word, that you may grow thereby, friends. 
Friends, we need to just spend time in God's word that we may grow. That we may grow. You know, here it, it mentions desires the pure milk of the word. And sometimes, what do we want? Um, we, we want the deep stuff, right? The meat of the word. There's nothing wrong with the meat of the word, friends. But you got to have the milk first. You got to have the basics of Christianity. What is the basics of Christianity? Love God with all your heart. Love your neighbor as yourself. Are we even doing that first before we get into the deep meat of the word? Friends, until, you know, if you love like 1 Corinthians 13 says, okay, then you're ready for the meat of the word. The basic of Christianity is love one another, love God. Take the principles of 1 Corinthians chapter 13 and evaluate, do I love this way? See, love is not how we think, right? That, well, I feel good about this person, so I love them. That's not love, according to Scripture. According to Scripture. So that's why we need to trust and believe and know that we shall live by, by the word of God. And that's why God says that we do not walk by sight, but we walk by what? In what faith? What's the faith? Faith in what? In the word of God. In the word of God. I've heard it, I've heard it said before, you know, uh, well, people need to establish a relationship with Jesus first before they get into the word. Friend, that's the most ridiculous thing. How else are you going to establish a relationship with Jesus if you don't get in the Word? Amen. You have to be in the Word to find out what Jesus likes, His characters, what He doesn't like, what He expects of you, His love for you, His mercies. This is how we ha form a relationship with Jesus is through spending daily time in the Word of God. Amen. Daily, daily time. Great Controversy, page 593. How many of you, and this, I, for, I'm, I apologize, I did, I, I did not put this quotation in the bulletin. I just uh, added it this morning. But here in Great Controversy, page 593, it's chapter 37, the scriptures is safeguard. <clears throat> here the testimony of Jesus says, in order to endure the trial before them, they must understand the will of God as revealed in His Word. In order to endure the trials, the wilderness, the temptations before us, we must understand the will of God as revealed where? In His Word. Not revealed in my thoughts, not revealed in my opinions, not, not revealed in what I think. You know, sometimes some people ask me, you know, what do you think? I know the Bible says this, but I want to know what you think. <laughs> and I, I kindly respond, well, who cares what I think? Amen. You know, God says this and this and this. And so, so it continues. How else will we know the, the will of God? Because it's revealed in His Word. And if you want to know the will of God, you will find it in His Word. You'll find it in His Word. She continues saying, They can honor Him only as they have a right concept of His character, government, and purpose and act according with them. And here comes, here comes the key part of this text. None. How many is none? Zero. Right? Nobody. None but those who have fortified the mind with the truth of the Bible will stand through the last great conflict. Amen. You want to stand through the great conflicts? You want to stand through the trials that are coming through the seven last plagues? through the prophecies that are yet to be fulfilled. Friends, if we're not in this word daily, I hate to burst your bubble, it ain't gonna happen. It's not gonna happen, friends. Knowing, knowing our fundamental beliefs and our doctrines and, and 
what the Bible says about Sabbath, what the Bible says about the state of the dead, what the Bible says about the sanctuary. Those are good. Those are very fundamentals. But friends, there is more than just knowing fundamental beliefs. Because we can, we can get to the point of knowing our fundamental beliefs and disregarding a daily study in God's word, friends. A daily study in God's word. None, nobody, and it's not me saying it, it's the testimony of Jesus so it has validity. Jesus is telling you and telling me, nobody but those who have fortified the minds with the truth of the Bible will stand through the last great conflict, friends. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So friends, Acts chapter 20, I appeal to you, you want to go to heaven? You want to be saved? You want to be resurrected in the first resurrection? I appeal to you, Acts chapter 20, verse 32, for your peace of mind, for your holistic life, I offer you, friends, the word of God. Acts chapter 20, verse 32. The Bible says, And now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and give you an inheritance among all those who are sanctified, friends. Where does that come from? From the word of his grace, from the word of God, friends, from the word of God. Friends, I appeal to you just here as we saw that Jesus was led from baptism to the wilderness and tempted there and Jesus depended on a thus says the Lord and Israel was taken out from Egypt, baptized there at the Red Sea and into the wilderness but they did not trust in God's word, friends. As we saw here in 1 Corinthians that that is an example for us an example for us that as we come into the church, as we experience our wilderness experience, before we enter the promised land, we need to learn and believe that we do not live by bread alone, but by what? Every single word that comes out of God, friends. We live by God's word. That's why we walk by faith and not by sight. Not by what looks good or seems good, but, but every word that God tells us. And it's very important, if, as we read here in Great Controversy 593, we want to be saved, we want to endure the trials, we have to fortify our mind because nobody who doesn't do it is going to be able to go through the, the trials. Friends. Those are... That's, that's strong language. That is very strong language there, friends. None but those who have fortified the mind. None. It doesn't matter. If you've been in the church 50 years, a pastor, an elder, a deacon, third, fourth generation, not bad, it doesn't matter how long you've been in the church or your position. If you do not fortify your mind with the truth of the Bible, you will not stand through the great conflict, friends. So I just appeal to you every day, every day, just how here Job and Jeremiah, that they love the Word of God more than their necessary food. Friends, I can tell you right now that I still need more growth. I still need to love more this food than this food. And I believe that I'm not the only one. I know, actually, I'm not the only one. So I appeal to you this morning. I appeal to you this morning. I'm not going to ask you if today you had your Bible reading, your Bible study, no. I appeal to you this morning. Spend time in the Word of God every day. Every day. Every day. You want to be saved? Amen. The only one that brings salvation, as we saw there in John, 
And this is eternal life, that they may know the only true God, the Son of God, which is Jesus Christ. Eternal life comes through Jesus, friends. And the only way you, you know about Jesus is in his word. So I plead with you, I plead with you. Your salvation actually depends on who? On Jesus? Jesus already has given it to you. All he needs is for you to accept it and spend time with him. Spend time with him. How many of us want to? How many of us actually need to spend more time in Bible reading? In Bible studying? Have you ever read the Bible and you ask, what does that mean? And you just skip over it and keep on going? I have. Spend time. And, and friends, there are, today there is no excuse, no excuse for anyone not to spend time in the Bible. Amen. The Bible is too hard with the these and thous. Well, don't get a these and thous Bible. Get an easier translation. Get a, a translation that you understand in your language. There is so many different types of translation available if you can't read the Bible with an audio. Bible is in Braille, friends. The Bible is available and that is by the grace of God. Because God knows that we needed it. And we need it for salvation. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Father in heaven, Lord, I thank you very much. <coughs> Lord, I thank you very much because you're patient with us. You're patient with Israel there in the wilderness and wanting to purify them and prepare them to trust in you in your word and yet the majority did not as so a father in heaven help us to learn from those lessons that when you take us out from baptism when you take us out you deliver us but then you deliver us into the wilderness and there lord we need to learn right now that we, li we live only by your word and what you say. We don't live by anything else but only by what you have to say for us. And help us to break our hearts. Lord, help us that we may break our wills and surrender our wills to you. Surrender, that we may surrender our wills to you. Our wills to your word. Because you are our Father and we are your children. And parents always know better for their children. And so we trust you as our Heavenly Father that you will guide us in the direction we need to go. But help us to every day, every single day, spend time in your word. Help me, oh my God, to spend more time in your word. Bless us now, and the rest of this Sabbath day. May your Holy Spirit fill every single heart here. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. amen.